In 2018, Ronda Rousey was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame and to the surprise of many, people did not agree with the decision. Some people bring up how she fought in a weak women's bantamweight division and how when she did lose, she was never able to reclaim herself. Aside from those two aspects, Ronda Rousey is the sole reason women's MMA is even popular today, and that in itself is quite the achievement. Hey guys, it's Hit Sport, and today we're going to be talking about how amazing Ronda Rousey actually was, because it's something I feel like many people have forgotten over the years because of the way things ended for her. Before going into MMA, Ronda Rousey was an Olympic-level judo fighter. She won a bronze medal in the Beijing Olympics. Now we know that not every Olympian can transition over to MMA and have amazing results. But after winning her first three amateur fights via armbar in the first round, Ronda showed tremendous promise in being a successful MMA fighter. She went on to build a pro record of 4-0, and oh, all within 2011. Did we forget to mention that all of those wins were by first-round armbars? They were. Ronda Rousey was quickly building a reputation as the girl who could snap her opponent's arm off within a round, and to be honest, it excited me and a lot of other MMA fans. At this time, Ronda was making the most noise in women's MMA since Gina Carano and Chris Cyborg fought back in 2009. After Carano and Cyborg fought, the excitement of women's MMA had all but died off. After Ronda's first four wins, Ronda started calling out Misha Tate, who was the current Strike Force women's bantamweight champion. That started one of the biggest and nastiest rivalries in women's MMA. All this hype led to a monumental title fight between the challenger Ronda Rousey and then champion Misha Tate on March 3, 2012. Now, the fight did go longer than Ronda's first four fights. But eventually, Ronda finished Misha Tate off in the first round with one of the most ruthless arm bars we've ever seen in MMA. Following this win, Ronda Rousey was becoming more of a household name. Strike Force set up another match for Ronda with Sarah Kaufman on August 18, 2012. The fight was a huge spectacle, mostly because of Ronda Mania. Ronda appeared on Conan had her own all-access special, appeared on ESPN's body issue, and overall was talking huge trash, which was typical Ronda fashion. She said this about her opponent, Sarah Kaufman. If I get her in a choke, I'm going to hold on to it until she's actually dead. Yikes. This event gained so much attention that it even caught the interest of Dana White, who prior to knowing about Rousey had stated that there would never be a women's division in the UFC. It's safe to say that Ronda caught the eye of Dana. He even attended her fight against Sarah Kaufman. What we were witnessing was a female fighter with barely two years of MMA training is now one of the main attractions in MMA. No one saw this coming. Now, this could have derailed the hype train for Ronda if she had lost her fight against Sarah Kaufman. But, like all the others before Sarah, Ronda got the submission in record speed, beating Sarah Kaufman 54 seconds into the first round. So one could imagine how much Ronda's stock grew after this fight. We know now that she's the reason Dana White finally decided to eat his words, and soon after started a female division in the UFC. Coming from the point of having said that there would never be a women's division, this was crazy progress. Ronda was soon promoted as the UFC women's bantamweight champion and had her first scheduled fight set. Ronda and Liz Carmouche were set to collide at UFC 157. Now, if you can recall back to when this event was announced, many MMOA fans did not like how a women's championship fight was headlining the card, let alone the fact that two women would be fighting in a cage. This was all still new to the public and even to the average MMA fan. The card itself had Dan Henderson and Lyoto Machida as the co-main event. People were saying, Oh, it's disrespectful to be having two legends like Henderson and Machida fighting below a women's championship. It just wasn't going over well. Now, while some fans were mad, others were thrilled because women's MMA was still new and the Ronda hype train was stronger than ever. So UFC 157 went down on February 23, 2013. And before Ronda finished Liz Carmouche in devastating fashion via armbar in the first round, Liz Carmouche actually had Rousey in huge trouble in the beginning of the round. Carmouche was almost able to secure a rear naked choke on Ronda. 
Now imagine if Carmouche had secured that rear naked choke. The Ronda as we know today would not likely have been the same and the Ronda mania would have ended. But just like in Ronda fashion, she secured yet another victory via submission. Now, after this fight, Ronda went on to defend her belt five more times, which included a rematch win against Misha Tate. The first round. She later landed her first knockout win against former wrestling Olympian Sarah McMahon and, of course, the combined 32-second destruction of Alexis Davis and Kat Zingano. Ronda was on a tear. Now UFC 190 was one of the main events that changed the course of Ronda's life and career. It's the event where the world saw Ronda go from fighter to UFC superstar. At UFC 190, Ronda flew into enemy territory, a.k.a. Rio de Janeiro, to fight the Brazilian Besh Correa. This fight had a lot of hype prior to it actually happening. Besh had basically built a resume from beating several of Ronda's teammates and was also aiming to beat Ronda. When Ronda went to Rio de Janeiro for fight week, she received praise by all the Brazilian fans, which is rare for an American who's coming to Brazil to fight a Brazilian. Nowadays, fighters are met with the infamous chant of, you're going to die. Now, unfortunately, I can't even pretend to speak in Portuguese, so I won't make an attempt at how to really say it, but that's how big Ronda Rousey was. In fact, I think there were more Ronda Rousey fans in Brazil than Besh Correa fans. So come night at the fight, it's August 1st, 2015, and Ronda absolutely flatlines Besh Correa via knockout in the first 30 seconds of the first round. The Ronda hype train continues. After her win, the Brazilian crowd was cheering for Ronda. This moment foreshadowed the fame that Ronda was about to receive. After that fight, it seemed like Ronda was popping up everywhere. She was in movies, on TV, on talk shows, in magazines, you name it, she was on it. At this point, she had even appeared in Furious 7 and Entourage. She even hosted an episode of SNL. This may have been the peak for Ronda. As for MMA, Ronda seemed unbeatable. Her fights became more of, when is she going to finish her opponent? Rather than, is she able to beat her opponent? Ronda even started talking about fighting Floyd Mayweather because she believed she could beat him, you know, the greatest boxer of possibly all time. To make matters worse, she even said she could take on and beat UFC heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez. Ronda, we love you, but that wouldn't have ended well. Now, of course, the Ronda and Cyborg potential fight hype was still growing, and many maybe if Ronda had won two more fights, a Cyborg versus Rousey super fight could have happened. Now, on top of this, Ronda was also having a lot of personal drama going on. Her mom had made some public comments about Ronda's coach and mentor, Edmund Tarverdian, saying things like he's a terrible coach and a bad person. To make matters worse, Ronda was also dating UFC heavyweight fighter Travis Brown. Now, around this time, Travis's ex-wife had accused him of domestic abuse, even going as far as posting some pictures of her bruises on Instagram. Now this also hurt Rhonda's image, as she was a role model for women, and dating an alleged abuser definitely wasn't something that was helping her image. So, a lot was happening in Rhonda's life, and on top of this, she had a third fight booked by the end of the year against decorated kickboxer Holly Holm. UFC 193 was on November 15th, 2015 in Melbourne, Australia, and Rhonda's star power was unmatched at this point. The pay-per-view did over 1 million buys, and the attendance was the largest in UFC history, with over 56,000 people. The stage was huge. Fans had agreed that Holly was a good fighter, but prior to the Ronda fight, she only picked up a couple of decision wins that weren't impressive enough to show that she was a serious contender. Everyone assumed Ronda would steamroll through Holly like Ronda had done on every other occasion. In many ways, it felt like the UFC was pushing Holly Holm too fast, and that's why Ronda was such a huge favorite coming into the fight. The fight starts, and Ronda was not able to impose her game on Holly like she always does, mostly because of Holly's experience as a kickboxer. The second round came, and Holly ducked one of Ronda's punches that had Ronda drop to one knee, and you could see things begin to shift. Ronda did not look like the unstoppable fighter that we all believed she was. It was obvious to everyone but her and her coach that she had a huge gap in her stand-up skills, and that was quickly being exploited by Holly. 
Now, when Holly finally threw that devastating head kick and finished Ronda with punches, you could see people's jaws drop. This became one of the top upsets in UFC history. This definitely changed a lot for Ronda Rousey. For the next year following that fight, Ronda was absolutely absent from the public eye. She vanished. It was crazy how fast things came crashing down, and quite frankly, most folks felt bad for her. However, there were so many people going against Ronda, some saying that she deserved it because her attitude was bad and that she was never really a good fighter. Sometimes, as fans, we have the memory of a goldfish and don't really recall how talented someone once was. The fight with Amanda Nunes for the belt at UFC 207 definitely did not help her image at all. In fact, after that fight, her MMA career was officially over and talks of her being an all-time great slowly faded away. A lot of people will say that Ronda never fought elite competition, that she was some one-trick pony, and she had a very bad attitude as a champ. Here's the thing. Obviously, the competition in women's MMA has grown a lot over the years, but that's the same story with every sport. Royce Gracie was amazing in the come-up of the UFC, but imagine prime Royce Gracie fighting in today's UFC. Oh, wait, we already saw that, and how did that end? Now, does that mean Royce Gracie losing to Matt Hughes makes him a bad fighter? Hell no, he's still a legend. And maybe Ronda was a one-trick pony, but she held that one trick with dominance. And because of that, 12 people in a row were unable to figure her out. This idea that she has a bad attitude is such a bad excuse when you look at the likes of Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz, Colby Covington, Brock Lesnar, and much more. Trash talk is part of building a fight and building a story, and that's exactly what Ronda was trying to do. I made this video because I was definitely a huge Ronda Rousey fan during her prime because, honestly, it was an incredible and exciting reign. The problem is that so many people look past that because of the way her MMA career ended. But I'll tell you this, Ronda is the reason women's MMA is huge. I mean, look at the other female sports and compare them to women's MMA, women's sports, and that's because of Ronda Rousey. She made Dana White eat his words by showing him that there is a place for women in MMA. You can even ask Misha Tate, and I bet you she will credit Rousey for building up women's MMA to where it is today. And if she doesn't, she's just being very petty. Aside from being massive in women's MMA, Ronda became a superstar athlete. And at the time, MMA fans never thought that an MMA fighter would get this much coverage. So when the question of if Ronda Rousey deserves to be in the UFC Hall of Fame comes to mind, I think that shouldn't even be a question. Ronda has been a trailblazer for other women entering the sport. This is hit sport. And this is our take on how good Ronda Rousey actually was. If you agree or disagree or have something else to add, post it below in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would help me so much. If you want more content, hit the subscribe button down below and also click that bell notification so whenever we upload something, you will be the first to receive that notification. Hit Sport Out.